Hello friends, Dr. David Katz again. Time for another COVID reality check. This one about pandemic waves. Yes, you get the tie today. I was speaking at a conference via Zoom. Don't get used to it. Um, we are mismaking the history of this pandemic even as we live through it. I'm seeing lots of media reports about second waves, for example, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, there have been these blaring headlines about a second wave and lockdowns and, and lockdowns occurring because of second waves. There is no second wave yet anywhere in the world. So I, I want to characterize the difference between a first wave that's been deferred and a second wave. It's really important because one has to do with behavior of the virus and the other has to do with our behavior which we control. And we are completely misrepresenting this and it's really important. And by the way, as ever, I have written a column on the topic uh, mismaking the, the history of the pandemic, and I'll provide a link below this video. So when we refer to past pandemics and we talk about first and second waves, the idea is that a given population is behaving much the same way. So, you know, we've never had lockdown like this before, so we're not in lockdown. People are out in the world, they're exposed, and the virus, it, usually it's been influenza, uh, circulates at a relatively high level, and then it goes away, typically in the summer months. So it stops circulating. So the people are doing all the same things, but the virus itself washed over us, and then disappeared, like the trough between two waves. And it's, you know, the, the people are the same, it's the movement of the water that's changed. The water is the virus. So the virus came, circulation was high, circulation stopped, we hadn't really changed anything, but maybe it got, we, we had more sunlight, it was summer. And then in the fall, we were aggregating indoors more, the weather got cooler, and the virus came back and started circulating again at higher levels. And sometimes the second wave has been worse than the first. And, you know, the speculation about this may have to do with does the virus uh, survive better indoors than out? People concentrate indoors. The air uh, is shared indoors as opposed to outdoors. Maybe sunlight uh, inactivates influenza, and all of that may be true. Um, so we've been invoking that experience to talk about waves of COVID, um, but there have been no waves of COVID. There has been a, a single inundation with COVID, and we've either been exposed or we've hidden away from it. And the way we've hidden away is kind of like quickly throwing up a levee to keep these floodwaters contained. Now, if you put up a levee and then you take it down and you get wet, that's not because there's a new flood. It's not a second wave. It's that you took your, your barrier down prematurely or haphazardly. And that's what's going on. That's what's going on in Melbourne, Australia. That's what's going on in many parts of the United States. That's what's going on in parts of the EU. In those populations that hid away from the virus in time, so in other words, before the virus was widespread, most of the population has no immunity. Most of the population is vulnerable. If you go back out into the world and you're not careful, while the virus is still circulating, it's going to wash over you. It's not a new wave of the virus. You changed your behavior. First you hid away, then you came out to play. Uh, so there is no second wave anywhere in the world. And that's good news, because what it looks like is once the first wave is done with us, maybe that's it. Maybe this is a one and done. We don't know for sure, but it, it looks that way. So rates of viral circulation in Sweden are low and falling, falling, falling. The same is true in northern Italy. Same is true in New York City, and for that matter, much of the northeast. So in Sweden, it was by design. The, the population there decided, the, the leadership decided, we're not going to lock down. We will stay out in the world, let the virus circulate among us, take our chances. Um, I don't think that approach was wrong, but I continue to think that Sweden could have more meticulously risk stratified the population, more carefully protected the highest risk people in nursing homes, the next highest risk, older people, the next highest risk, people with chronic disease, they could have had their cake and eaten it too. They could have had the exposure, achieved herd immunity, protected the vulnerable. So I, I think they did okay. I think they could have done much better. Uh, and I think it's far too soon to reach a conclusion about who has won, who has lost in the efforts to minimize the harms of the pandemic. In northern Italy and New York City, it's a totally different scenario. We essentially got bowled over by the, the, the first and perhaps only wave of the pandemic, not by design, but by happenstance, lockdown came too late. Uh, in northern Italy, it just it hit them before they were prepared, and the population was awash in the virus before they had taken any precautionary measures. 
in New York, I, I think you know, there was basically a, a brief window where states were waiting for the federal government in the U.S. to take action. That action never came, and then the state stepped up, but uh, SARS-CoV-2 was already riding the, the subway in New York. So, so this is really important because if there's just one wave, we are in control of whether we get exposed or we don't, how we get exposed. We've locked down indiscriminately, uh, causing all kinds of harm to people with massive unemployment. And then we came out of hiding indiscriminately and haphazardly, exposing vulnerable people to the virus. So, you know, it's not that big a deal if the virus is circulating widely among us, as long as that's limited to people at very low risk of bad outcomes. Overwhelmingly, the bulk of COVID infections are asymptomatic or very mild. That's no big deal. What we can't let happen is the highly vulnerable get exposed because when that happens, we see hospitalization go up and that's occurring in much of the US. So we, we went into hiding badly. We came out of hiding just as badly. It does look to me, however, like there is just one wave. And we might predict that the virus would come back in the fall and there would be a second wave if it ever went away in the first place. But here we are in the middle of the summer and the virus hasn't gone away at all. Every place that's come out of hiding and been exposed has high levels of circulation. I don't really see how the virus can come back if it's never gone away in the first place. So it looks to me at this juncture as if those places that have haphazardly come back out into the world are now subject to the kind of exposure that happened by design in Sweden and by accident in northern Italy and New York City. And what that suggests is that the virus will circulate widely. It will exact a toll, sadly, because we didn't protect the most vulnerable. We didn't reliably practice risk stratified approaches to total harm minimization. We could have, I think we should have, but since we didn't, the populations are just being exposed. But I think the whole thing is likely to be over in about six weeks time. Uh, making predictions during a pandemic is fraught with peril. I, I do so with humility. I'm not sure that I'm right. Maybe there will be a second wave, but there's been no second wave to date, and all reports to the contrary are quite simply wrong, and I think that is encouraging news. There is one wave. Maybe that's it. Uh, those places that have carefully avoided it will remain vulnerable. Maybe they need to stay in hiding, wait for a vaccine. I think the better alternative would be for them to come out in a risk-stratified way. So those who are least apt to be harmed by COVID are the ones most likely to be exposed, and those most, most likely to be harmed are very unlikely to be exposed. That could be done. I think that should be done. Almost no place in the world has done that. Um, but it looks to me like uh, even with uh, a, a haphazard loosening of restrictions, uh, that this will all play out over a span of weeks. And in a relatively short period of time, we'll know whether I'm right or wrong.